All right, Bitcoin got a bit of a move to the upside last night. Um, we we're getting some price action above the highs of the range, something that we really haven't seen before. Uh, this is something different. And I am in a long trade right now, which I will go over how I got into that. But I think there is definitely a possibility that we could see further upside here that uh, we may target some higher levels now. I mean, I also think it's possible that we don't, that we continue chopping around. If you look at the last range that we traded in, um, we kind of saw something similar here where we got some uh, price action above an area where we didn't have any price action previously. And then we just kind of dropped down, stopped out everybody that longed in this area. And then we kind of continued chopping around. We didn't get the move up until much later. Um, so that is definitely possible. The only difference is if you look at the money flow uh, on the 24 minute money flow was coming down during this time whereas right now the money flow is increasing and the trend recently has basically been when the money flow is increasing the price is increasing uh, you can just kind of see that on the 24 minute here we get those big pumps when the money flow starts uh, moving to the upside and we are seeing that. We are seeing the 24-minute money flow moving to the upside. These higher time frame money flows are still trending higher. The 12-hour, the daily, seems like, is still trending higher. We got another little move to the upside on the daily money flow. And the daily VWAP is moving to the upside as well, showing that we could get a green dot here soon. So I am long right now from almost exactly 23k I originally entered at 22,960 and then I compounded a little bit when we got this sharp move up and sharp move back down I TP'd and then uh, added some back in down here moved my entry up a little bit so basically I had this area marked out on my chart I was looking for a long from this zone right here the golden pocket point of control and value area low uh, we had the point of control of the larger range, value area low of the smaller range, and this golden pocket. So basically, I uh, woke up on Saturday morning, and uh, I realized that we had come down and tapped my level. And we did get some confirmations as we came down to tap this level. We got bull dibs on the 36 minute and down. Our money flow wasn't really working in our favor, however, we did see the bullish divergences there we also got a decent reaction off this level we got a 0.64 percent move to the upside so i figured since i missed this trade i'll pull a fib and i'll see if i can get in on a golden pocket retest and we did get that golden pocket retest we also had a daily level right around that golden pocket and we got a nice reaction off the daily level in between this zone of the 618 and 786 and during this time when I was looking at market cipher I saw some things that were making me lean a little bit more bullish the four hour VWAP was curving to the upside we were looking to print a green dot here we were getting a little move up with the money flow we also had a trigger wave printing on the 12 minute right here with the money flow starting to curve to the upside which is typically a pretty good signal um, for entering on a golden pocket retest, especially when we got bearish or excuse me, bullish divergences at the low. When you see, you know, we got the anchor wave, we got the bullish divergence, and then on the golden pocket retest, the money flow is trending up and we're seeing nice direction with the trigger waves. And the money flow was looking pretty decent. The uh, momentum waves were looking pretty decent through the three minute from the 12 minute to the three minute and then on the one minute time frame we did see some bullish divergences as we made that last low so at that point i decided uh that i would take a scalp trade there i had a very tight window of invalidation here i originally entered right about here so i had a 0.16 percent stop loss or so and one more confluence that I saw as we were coming back down for that golden pocket retest, that would be this wick right here, is we saw trades closing out as well as traders sort of flopping and groping here. 
So if I zoom into a smaller time frame, you could see that as we were getting this uh, golden pocket retest, the open interest was coming down, CVD coming down, showing that longs were getting stopped out, they were closing out. And then we continued to see open interest trending down as the CVD was trending up, which kind of made me think that there were some people who shorted down here that were now closing out their trades that were getting wrecked because they shorted low instead of shorting high. And then I saw what looked to be some more shorts opening up, open interest increasing there, CVD coming down. Um, so that looks like shorts opening up. And uh, it seems like those shorts that opened up below VWAP may have gotten trapped there and eventually had to close their trades right here. And we saw that massive decrease of open interest on this candle. And I did take a bit of a larger position size than I normally do. Um, not by much, but I took a little bit of a larger position and I decided to TP a little less aggressively. I set some of my TPs higher than I normally would. So the reason I took a larger position is mostly because I had such a tight window of invalidation here. I could take on the same amount of risk I normally would with like a quarter or like a 0.3% stop loss. And uh, you know I could have a bit more margin in my trade. Also, I noticed that we were getting these uh, quick wicks to the upside, giving us like 0.4, 0.5% moves. So I figured that uh, there was a decent chance I would be able to lock in this trade pretty quickly. And I actually wasn't really able to lock this in quickly. I didn't hit my first TP until about three hours, maybe two and a half hours after I entered. But still, I was able to hit TP1 and uh, lock in You know what I normally would for a locked in trade. Move my stop loss to entry and then uh, have a bit more margin than I'm used to. And the last reason is just because the uh, higher time frames were making me think we could see another move to the upside. Um, even though we did get a lot of bearish signals previously, things were seemingly starting to turn around on some of these higher time frames. And so yeah, I basically wanted to see if I could uh, hold a trade up to some of these higher levels. Now in terms of levels that I am watching, um, levels that I would consider TPing or maybe even shorting, depending on what we see at Market Cipher. Uh, number one would be these local highs. We do have um, potential to print bearish divergences. I mean, we could see continued bearish divergences on these higher time frames, even though we wouldn't see one necessarily from this wick because momentum has increased since then. But we go down to some of the lower time frames the one hour doesn't have it either but the 24 minute we could definitely form a bear div here momentum is lower than uh, what it was back here so if we get a quick move up here we could see uh, 24 minute divs there um, even though money flow is looking pretty bullish on the 24 minute so I would really like to see that take a serious dive before I consider shorting this but uh, I may consider TPing there if we do see just the momentum divergences. And really to short any of these levels, um, at least without first sort of establishing some market structure, like if we just get a quick wick up to some of these levels, I'm not going to be thinking about shorting them unless we see uh, pretty much bearish divergences across all of the time frames. If, you know, we're only really seeing them on the higher time frames and the medium term time frames are not diverging, then I would probably be a bit more careful about taking some shorts, at least without, you know, maybe first establishing some sort of range up here and then maybe looking for uh, some sort of entry from that. But this is also a very key area, a very key zone of resistance. We are approaching the highs of uh, this macro range and uh, so this is going to be macro resistance and another level I'd be watching up in this area is that untapped weekly right there you know again I wouldn't be too quick to jump on any shorts unless we're seeing you know very confident signals like bear divs across all of the time frames um, also a large decrease of open interest 
you know, if we see a quick move up and then we start getting a rejection and we had a large decrease of open interest like this, maybe that could also add some confidence, but still I would be careful. And then we also have the highs of the range. We could CDW. And then after that, as I said, it is the 30K to 28K zone. Now, something interesting about the 28 to 30K zone, uh, something interesting I noticed is if we do end up seeing a quick move up there, we have the potential to form some sort of a diamond pattern, it seems. And I am definitely no expert when it comes to patterns, but what I'm kind of seeing here is we had this range. We broke the range to the downside. We uh, kind of recovered. Now we're getting a quick move to the top of the range. And, uh, you know, this kind of looks like a diamond pattern to me. I don't know if this is how everybody identifies uh, diamonds, but uh, Tom Crown taught me this. Um, you know, he likes to look for a range, and then a break to the downside, and then a move to take out the highs. And, uh, you know, interestingly, this uh, top trend line here could definitely line up with this key resistance that we have over here. And, as you know, diamonds are a reversal pattern, which means maybe we then see a retracement of some kind, maybe back down to the low of the diamond, somewhere around 19, 20K-ish. And, uh, you know, maybe then we see a break to the upside, maybe a bit of an actual relief rally. Just something interesting I noticed, and uh, I like the confluence with this key resistance over here. So that's something I'm going to be aware of. And yeah, I mean, pretty much now I'm going to be uh, watching some of these key levels and uh, determining if I want to TP more for my long based on market stifer. The long is the only trade I'm in right now, so I'm probably also going to be looking for some uh, short scalps. But, uh, you know, I'm going to be careful with them. But anyways, I think that's about it for today. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Really appreciate the support. And I'll see you all in my next one. Peace.